just uh, look around the sanctuary, even as it's just me talking, it's still most everybody smiling, and that is just awesome, man. There's a whole lot of churches that doesn't happen, so I am thankful for, to be here. So having said that, what other announcements do we have? What other prayer concerns do we have? Yes, Michelle. for that this year. So prayers for her also. If any of you ladies, is it too late to sign up? Uh, is it full? Still still yeah, so if any of you ladies feel called to go to that, please do. You gotta be there Thursday night, right? So you need Friday night off of work. Or Friday off of work. But if you feel called to that, want to go to that, there's still time to sign up. <laughs> So we have that. Anybody else? Anything else? So, yes, ma'am. Um, my Aunt Deb, her mom, was found unconscious the other day, and they put her on the ventilator, and today she is off the ventilator. So just continue prayers for her, for her healing. So that would be your what? So time is relative. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we found her unconscious, and now it's uh, we put her on the ventilator. And she's off the ventilator and she's conscious again and so I have a phrase that yes, I have my great grandson is wonderful. His surgery went well and he didn't even know the Lord. I had a surgery and he's running and crying because grandma couldn't go with him at all. Mm -hmm. So Marie's grandson is doing well. That's the hernia surgery, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and it wasn't a rupture, it was the spleen. Oh, the <laughs> spleen. Yes. So. Anybody else? Yeah. All right, so what do you have there? There's a gift out here in the foyer. Um, it's a seed. There's a cross here. It's a paper seed. There's 10 perennials in there, and you just bury that, and then there's a verse there for you. Nice. So we have a Resurrection Sunday gift for everybody. I know the ladies were here earlier in the week putting that together. So make sure you grab one on your way out. There's a seed. So remind you of this day throughout the year, throughout the summer for sure. So, amen. Um, so, thanks to Deb for running the camera. I know uh, Donita is relieved to have you here. <laughs> Happy Easter to all our friends at home watching online. And for those of you who don't, don't know it, uh, I looked last week and we always have about 100 people watching online. You know? So, yeah, I don't think most people at church are aware of that. And so, uh, that's awesome, isn't it? So uh, all of us together. So I have our opening prayer, then we'll play some music and begin this wonderful day of worship together. So dear Heavenly Father, we know that you are with us in all things. Um, but Jesus told us where two or more are gathered, that your spirit is here with us. And we know that that is especially true today. We pray your blessing. We pray your anointing upon this service. Uh, we know that so special here that we continue to grow and it's not about the numbers it's about the love and when we truly seek you above all things and seek your kingdom above all things uh, that you will bring people here the holy spirit will guide people uh, to worship with us and we just pray uh, for the purification of hearts and souls that all we do that all we say the word every word that leaves our mouth glorifies you and we just pray your blessing upon this service, your anointing, that the Spirit be here with us, that your angels be here with us, as we joyfully uh, praise you, and uh, with respect we worship you. And just continue to grow us into the people that you've created us to be, which is to be as Christ-like as possible, to be loving and merciful as possible. And we pray these things, saying the prayer that your son taught his disciples many years ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth 
as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Mine is the kingdom and the power.
Carlos, how are you today? Good. Good. All right, can you say your name so everyone here in church knows you? Pesley. Evelyn. And obviously these are the two beautiful girls that sing what an awesome God we have. So happy Easter to both of you. All right, so today we are going to talk about um, how sweet God's words are. But first of all, I have... Can you hold on to this, Preston? I brought a jelly bean. Why don't you girls have one? What do they taste like, by the way? They're <laughs> <laughs> sour? Oh, I'm sorry, I gave you all that. <laughs> okay. Press the end for me. Okay, I, I'm sorry, girls. Okay, well, no, actually, there's a little bit behind this. You want a sweet one? Okay. <laughs> Seriousness. Okay, now we're going to talk about about <laughs> about God's sweet words. Okay, all right. So we are going to start in Matthew, Matthew twenty-eight, verse one. Okay, we're going to read until verse ten. All right. Early on Sunday morning, as a new day was dawning. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to the tomb. Because you girls know what happened, right? God, our Jesus died on the cross, okay? And the two ladies were really worried, so they wanted to go and visit Jesus' body at the tomb. So both Mary Magdalene and Mary ran to the tomb because they just, not, they just needed to see Jesus, okay? So suddenly, there was a great earthquake. And see, I forgot about that part. I forgot about the earthquake until I read that throughout the week. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and rolled aside the stone and sat on it. So here's a big stone and an angel just sitting on the stone. He, he's just waiting because he knows he's going to have visitors, okay? His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was a brilliant white. The guards, oh, okay, so there's guards that went to the tomb. The guards shook with fear when they saw him and fell into a dead faint. <laughs> I think that's funny. I think that's funny. All right, so then this is, this is the serious part, okay? The angel spoke to the women. Don't be frightened, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified, but he isn't here. For he has come back to life again, just as he said he would. So those are his sweet words. He told people he was going to come back. Come in and see where his body was laying. And now, so quick, go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and that he is going to Galilee to meet them there. This is my message to them. The women ran from the tomb badly frightened, but also filled with joy and rushed to find the disciples to give them the angel's message. And when they were running, suddenly Jesus was there in front of them. I bet they were crying. I bet they were crying. Good morning, he said. And they fell to the ground before him, holding, him his, holding his feet and worshiping him. These two ladies loved him so much. Then Jesus said to them, don't be frightened. 
Go tell my brothers to leave at once for Galilee to meet me there. So his sweet words were that I'm not leaving you. I will be coming again. His sweet words to you is that he will never leave you. He is there for you every minute of every day. Whenever you have a bad day or your feelings are hurt or someone just makes you sad, <coughs> girls, it's okay to put your hands together and pray and ask Jesus to help you. Because that's how much he loves you. Okay, let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you are such an awesome God that you gave your one and only Son to die on the cross for us because that's how much you loved us. You loved us with all your heart and still do. I pray that these girls and the congregation will build a relationship with you so strong that you live in their heart and they are willing to share it with everyone they meet. I pray that these girls have a beautiful day celebrating your resurrection. And in Jesus' name we pray.
Scripture today is from the book of Luke, chapter 21, verses 1 through 9. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body of Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, Two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men? and be crucified, and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to the rest. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. chastised because you need to be reverent at all times as a reverend. Uh, and I watch people like Bill Johnson who has, uh, travels the world, has millions of people. He starts out his, every sermon with three or four jokes. And they're not even Christian jokes, you know. So, I don't know. I think God wants us to have a sense of humor. Amen. Mm -hmm. you know, that's why he invented the platypus, right? Defies <laughs> <laughs> all logic and all answers. The platypus, my favorite animal. One of them, anyways. Sometimes you feel like a platypus, don't you? Don't quite fit in anywhere in any way. And so that's another message there for another day. But it is Resurrection Sunday, amen, amen. amen. How many of you woke up extra early just excited? I woke up at 3.30 this morning and I didn't feel bad, you know? I wasn't worried about anything, just excited about the day, excited about the week. I, I mean, if I talk about too much, I will start to cry. This week has just been incredible. Uh, for me personally, as a pastor, as a Christian, as a member of the Portage Prairie Church, to be here Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and now Sunday to, to worship and be with my brothers and sisters, it's just thrilling to me. Because what's heaven? 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, worshiping God, being with your brothers and sisters in Christ. And the more time we spend together, the more it is heaven-like. And so for those of you that don't want to be here and don't want to be with your brothers and sisters in Christ, and I realize some of you work and so, you know, have other things, uh, so you can't be here. So it's not a chastisement of uh, drop everything or you know, beat you up for not being here at all. But uh, given the opportunity, we really should, in our hearts, desire to be together because that is, uh, in, in the end, that's what heaven is, to be with Jesus, to be with God, and to be with each other. And that's why it's so important here at the church to treat each other well, you know? If somebody hurts you, what do you do? You forgive, you know? And the sooner you forgive, the better it is. But uh, as I always tell you, you need to talk about it too. Not just say, you know, don't be, be an officer, put your head in the sand. Uh, Jesus didn't do that either. But we are here because Jesus was resurrected. And he remains alive. And where is Jesus right now, according to the Bible? Sitting at the right hand of God, right? And uh, just glorious, glorious morning. We celebrate the most incredible day in the history of humankind that ever was or ever will be. And so I love this passage. Uh, we found this wonderful picture. It took less than two minutes to find it, which is only a joke between Sharon and I. I tell Sharon when I first got here, she'd say, well, it takes 72 hours to do the PowerPoint. 
And I'd say, why does it take 72 hours to do the power pump? Well, you gotta find just the right picture. And I told her, well, it's been my experience in going to seminary and, and to teaching school especially. I mean, I made lots of PowerPoints, you know? And what I learned during that experience was that uh, you spend hours and hours looking for just the right picture, and where do you end up? At one, you end up in one of the first pictures you looked at. And so if you find something that's pretty good, and I made a rule for myself in doing that, I gave myself two minutes. And what you find in two minutes, you just go with what's best, because that's probably where you're gonna end up anyways. And so we do that, so now it's a personal joke. And so she, she, I mean, she was struggling with what I wanted, and so she, she, she put the demand on me, you got two minutes. And it worked, but I love this, and man, I could preach on just that empty tomb uh, for hours, and I know you're excited about that, and that's really what you want, right? Yeah, see, that's how to make a congregation quiet. Tell them you're going to be here for hours and hours. But anyways, because here's the fact. Jesus died on the cross. What's on the cross? Our sins are on the cross. We are, uh, our sins are forgiven, like I chose that first song, because uh, we are cleansed of our sins by his blood. Amen. And that blood is upon the cross. And that tomb, that tomb, that tomb is not just a small thing. We hear the story about the tomb. The angels are there, but what is the tomb? The tomb is empty. The tomb is empty. What does that symbolize? That's our sins. Jesus went to the cross. That's us. That's our soul. That's our sins. They're no more. Before we come to Jesus, what's that tomb? What's that cave? What's that garage? It's full of our sins. It's full of all wrongdoings. It's full of all the bad things. That empty tomb is a symbol of us. It's a symbol of Jesus was there, and Jesus took away all those bad things from our heart, from our soul, from our minds, and we are made anew. Amen? Amen. And that is the truth. That's what we should see in that empty tomb. Jesus has resurrected, yes, but he has taken our sins. He has emptied our souls of any of the wrongdoing. And like I preach all the time uh, during Day Polaris, it was very powerful. All the men that were there, uh, you know, I've talked about it once since then, but many, many, many of those men are still holding on to their wrongdoings, even though they had repented, even though they had admitted, I've done wrong, even though they prayed to the Lord, forgive me, uh, they're still holding on to it. And that's just Satan's tool. The sooner you forgive and move on, the sooner you repent and move on, the more you can live for the Lord. You cannot serve two gods. If you're holding on to your old sins and your shame and your unhappiness and your grudges, uh, you are not able to be full of the Lord. If you are full of your unhappiness, your sadness, all those earthly things, that is not what God wants. That is not where God wants you. If you walk up to somebody and they say, how are you doing? And you say, well, you know, 20 years ago, my wife left me. And, about, and you know, and I lost my job 14 years ago. And da, da, da. You're not talking about the Lord, are you? But if you talk about 20 years ago, uh, my wife left me. Man, you should know it. My, I never had it so good. My life is so blessed. God has done this in my life. And he's growing our church and bringing wonderful people here. Uh, so we can scare the beans out of them on Friday night. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they did. And so, uh, but we're always looking forward, amen? I mean, just the spirits tell me to say this. It's not for everybody, it's just for some of you. But uh, very loudly say, I am forgiven. I am forgiven. That's what today is all about. It's a new start. The 2 Corinthians 5, 17. That is, uh, like I say, on my bedroom wall. I say it, see it. Uh, when I wake up and when I go to bed, I am a new person. I am a new man in Christ. The old one is gone. You know, and each day is a new opportunity. Amen? Each day we come from that tomb. Each day we are given a new opportunity. How many of you lived the perfect day yesterday and every word that came from your mouth was Christ-like and for Christ? And you saved 20 souls yesterday. Yeah, none of us did. But today's a new day, amen? Today's a new opportunity. Just like Jesus coming out of that tomb, it is a new day, a new opportunity. Forgive yourself, move forward, and work for the Lord. Work for the glory of God. Work for the kingdom of God. Every word that leaves your mouth, every thought. And like I tell you every week, I know you go to work. I know, you know, can you mow the lawn for God? Can I golf? I've had people ask you, how can I golf for God, Pastor Scott? 
I love North. A lot of guys are in the golf league. They had a nice golf course in that little town. And uh, but I said, well, you know, if you hit a bad shot, you cuss. That's not for the glory of God, right? And if you do the, the Tiger Woods and wrap your uh, golf club around a tree when you hit a bad shot, that's not for the glory of God. But uh, when you're out there with those fellas, no matter what you do, whether you're at work, uh, wherever you are at the store, you can talk about God. Amen? Amen. You can talk about Resurrection Sunday. You can talk about, man, I used to be this. I used to cuss a lot. I had a class this week. You know, I was uh, in the uh, auto shop and had just the one group. Wonderful young man. Very nice. Very respectful. But... Uh, they got the potty mouth, right? And I worked on them all week, you know. Uh, I don't know if you have talked about it. I got one rule. I got two rules. Bad things happen when kids stand up, so be in a chair. <laughs> and the other one is no cussing, no spitting, no stabbing, no shooting, and no cheating. And that covers most everything, uh, but that cussing thing, you know. And so those guys begin to self-monitor. Oh, you can't say that, Mr. Smith. <laughs> but by the end of the week, it made a difference. They began to self-monitor. They began to consciously apologize. And, and I would tell them each time, you know, I used to do that. There's no reason for it. You know, it doesn't prove anything. And I got first graders that cuss equally as well as you. It does not make you a man. And so uh, it doesn't prove anything other than you have a potty mouth. And you can change it, and it is a choice. And so each day, those kids changed, they cussed less, they were more respectful, and, and they got better at Uno each and every day, so, <laughs> which is what we did a lot of. Uh, but that tomb is empty, and it's not just an empty tomb. For the rest of your life, I pray when you read that passage that you see yourself, your soul is that empty tomb. And at one point, it was full of sin or has some sin. How many of you have a garage? And some of you have a spotless garage. Everything has a place and every place has a thing, right? Others of us, I like to, if I can clean my garage out once a year, man, I'm doing good. And things kind of have a place. <laughs> but that's kind of uh, that tomb, you know? Clean it out. Keep it cleaned out. Keep our soul, keep our heart, keep our mind cleansed. Amen? And we do that by repentance. We do that by looking in the mirror. We do that by waking up every day. And like I tell you guys, uh, probably not often enough, before your feet even hit the ground, say, thank you, Lord, for this day. Uh, guide me. Touch my heart. Lead me. Take me where you will have me go. Give me the words you will have me say. Make your day before your feet even hit the ground. Say a short prayer to God about him being in control of your life. And it's just like coming from the tomb. Uh, you've been cleansed. Say a prayer of repentance and earnestness. And then begin your day and be like Christ. Uh, so that's where we're at. Now, what that should do for you is that should bring you joy, amen? Living in the Lord, knowing you're forgiven, knowing you are blessed. You know, if I ask you to raise your hand, how many of you are blessed? In my mind, the silly guy that I am, if I ask you how many of you are blessed, I think everybody should hear should go like this, except for Vivian, who's gonna have a triple <laughs> shoulder surgery. I don't know how you have triple, but she's having it. So, but, we are so blessed, it's crazy, right? All those nice cars out there, all our nice homes. Nobody here is starving, you know? We are just blessed beyond uh, all belief. And that's why we smile so much and we have God in our heart. But what I want you to see, uh, Nehemiah 8.10 says, The joy of the Lord is my strength. So also know that if you have that joy, if you know that you are loved, what should that bring you? And the word is should. Does it? I don't know. What should it bring you? It should bring you strength. Because as the song says, Zach Williams, there ain't nobody, there ain't nobody gonna. There you go, yeah. So, can Satan steal your joy? Did Satan steal Jesus' joy? The answer is a little bit. When he went to that cross, was Jesus excited and happy? But Jesus knows what's on the other side, Amen. So matter, matter what happens as Jesus went to that cross, as Jesus went to the grave, he knew what was on the other side, amen? And was he joyous about that? And the answer is, of course he was. And he knows that he overcame death, and that's what this whole day is about. Because Jesus is alive, amen? And so my question, after all that talking, uh, which is awesome, I just, I just love this day, I love this message, 
My question for you always, 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 and I question it about our church and what we're doing and the people when you come to this church, are you alive in Christ? I know you've all heard me say that. And it's not just alive, it's not just believed, it's are you alive? And so I don't do this often, but you know, I wrote some things down here to read. So I looked up definition of dead. And it's lacking feeling, lacking sensitivity, so uh, you're kind of, you're numb, right? So if I tell you, you know, my cat got ran over last night, and uh, somebody, you know, bad things happen, somebody stole my car, my cat got ran over, somebody broke into my house, and you just look at me and say, well, that's too bad, and then you walk on, uh, you're kind of numb, you're dead on the inside, right? You don't have any compassion or anything. And so that's one way of being dead. Another way of dead, uh, being dead says is to be numb, unresponsive, but not having the ability to sustain life. And so does this church sustain life? What is life? And it would be the life, uh, you know, it would be Jesus, alive in Christ. It would be the Holy Spirit. It would be smiles and compassion and forgiveness, all those gifts and fruit of the Spirit. Do we have those? Are we alive? And that's a serious question. That's a serious question each and every day, each and every week at our church, but also in your life because everything starts with you. Look at your neighbor and say, this starts with you. So if you're holding a grudge, if you're the one spitting out bad words, if you're the one doing all those things, uh, you're dragging the church down. You're chasing away the goodness. You're chasing away the Holy Spirit. Uh, some of you know who you are. Uh, you've either come from churches where you've been chased away, or you are the people responsible for chasing people away from churches. And period. And when those things leave your mouth and you drag other people down, you put down the pastor, the other people in the church, and are negative and hateful, it kills. It's death to a church. It's death to relationships. Amen. It does not bring life. And this is all about life and life in Christ. So are you alive? Is this church alive? So conversely, living means active in function or use. Is this church active in function and use? And that's why I love this week. When's the last time at this church we had worship for four days in a row? Not counting Day Caloris, that's a special event, but I mean just this church. And uh, you people that have been here for a long time, maybe you can answer that, but yeah, I have never heard anyone ever mention four days of worship in a row. And, uh, look out, because man, I think it should be four or five every week. You know? <laughs> so I like the choir, but I, I'll share with you now. I didn't want to get people to get confused with what was going on, but seriously looking at having choir practice and then after choir practice, coming out here and having a prayer service. And I don't know who will attend or who won't, but it will be some singing, but it will also be very active praying with uh, backup music. And so it will be uh, whoever wants to be here. They'll be uh, praying various ways and for different things. And so that's something you're seriously looking at. And uh, at the heart of everything, you know, what did Jesus say when he tipped the tables? My house, uh, my father's house is not a house of um, not a marketplace, but it's a house of prayer. And so when you describe this church and what we do, uh, where is prayer on our priority list? And it may be there for you individually, but having a, a regular prayer service is important to a church and vital. And so that's something we're looking at increasing here. And so are you alive in Christ? And the thing you have to uh, thing that, that we struggle on that we uh, uh, talked about just a little bit uh, don't get caught up in the past what's Satan's tools you know and I preached earlier this year about Satan's hooks how does he drag you back how does he uh, keep you from moving forward Satan puts his hooks in you uh, how many of you are married or have been married how many of you have never had an argument or a fight and you know hands, all the hands go down and so you have struggles in your marriage, but uh, you also have struggles in your relationships with your kids, with your friends. Uh, that's how Satan gets a hold of you. And the longer you remain mad, the longer it takes you to forgive, the, the more uh, Satan can work against us as a church, against you as a Christian to keep you from growing. You know, we can never, ever, ever forget as Christians, as we look at the empty tomb, as we look at the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you can never forget the cross. Forgive them, Father, they know, know not what they do. 
You know, and if somebody hurts you, and instead of trying to beat them up or get even, uh, the best thing to ever do is to go to them and say, man, you really hurt me. You're my brother, you're my sister, I love you, uh, but what you said about me, it hurt. And it's not the truth, and I just want to hug you, and please say you're sorry. And that's enough. I don't want to beat you up, I don't need retribution. I, I forgive you already. And just, uh, Let's, let's get through this. And that is a beautiful church. That is a beautiful person. And that is a Christian, Christ-like person. And so that is a message from the cross. That's part of the empty tomb. Because can we change yesterday? Any of you own a time machine? Because man, we make some serious money for this church if you own a time machine. And so... None of us do. We can't change tomorrow, but we can make tomorrow better. Or we can't change yesterday, but we can make tomorrow better, right? Mm -hmm. So whatever it is about yesterday, you know, some of you that have been going to church for two or three weeks, well, you can't go back and come to church. You can't uh, fix any of those things in your past. Those mistakes that you made and to hold on to them and let Satan beat you up is wrong and is not godly. Repent and move forward. You are forgiven. That's what the cross is all about. Uh, today, if you look up there, I uh, don't know that any of you have put it together, but we have the cross on the altar. And for the Jews, where did they take their sins? Where was their sacrifice? It was at the altar. That's where the Jews went. For Christians, where do we take our sins for forgiveness and our sacrifice? We take it to the cross. And so there is the Old Testament and the New Testament together. And there is no reason for us to live in the past. There is no reason for us to not forgive. There is no reason for us to not have a clear conscience. There is no reason for us not to live in love. There is no reason for us to not live in mercy because there is the whole message. Amen? Amen. Amen. There is the beauty of God, the true beauty. It is the altar and the cross, they are the same. It is giving all of your issues, all of your problems, all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your love to God, to the altar and to the cross. Let that never leave your heart. And so how we uh, move forward from this, the last part of this message is uh, taking this message to the world, amen? And so are you alive in Christ? This goes with all the messages that I talk about. What do you bring into the room? Do you bring love, mercy, uh, all those things? When you walk into a room, do people smile? Or do they go, ooh, Pastor Scott's here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go get a cup of water. I'll be right back in 20 minutes. So, uh, when you walk in, it's like, hey, give me a hug. Or, hey, you know how to, uh, I'm telling you, man. Uh, you Christians, how many of you are Christians? When you go into a room, you should be looking for the hurting people. You should be bringing Jesus. You should be bringing the sunshine, the smiles. Can I pray for you? I heard your dog ran away. I heard your kid's sick. Let's pray. Be bold, be strong, at work, at anywhere, man. Uh, that's what you bring into the room. That's what a strong Christian does. That's what a strong church does. Uh, you know, this church is beginning to move that way. I hear there's still not a lot, but more conversations about let's pray and about how God's moving in your life. And it is a wonderful and beautiful thing. And that's what it is supposed to be. What's in your heart comes out of your mouth. Like I always tell you. Uh, so if you're not reading your Bible, how quick is scripture going to come to your mind? Not very quick because you're not in it. And if you're not, you know, if you're listening to secular radio, what songs are you going to sing? If you're watching secular television, what are you going to reference? You know, all those shows that, uh, for the most part, have people sleeping around and homosexuality and all those things that are not godly. And so uh, we need to be in the Word. We need to try to surround ourselves with Christian people and Christian thoughts and Christian shows and Christian movies to the best of our ability. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so that is keeping that tomb empty. That is how we live in a Christ-like manner. So, question for all of us today is, 
Jesus is alive, right? Jesus sits at the right hand of God, and we know he is everywhere. He's everywhere through the Holy Spirit, but if you uh, are online, if you're reading various websites that are true, that are actually Christian uh, scholarly websites, that Jesus uh, comes to people. Like I've told you, I've shared it too many times at church, there are many people in Iran. The reason there are Christians in Iran is because there are many Iranians who say Jesus was in my room. And said, I love you. And many of them get killed. They get martyred within weeks of, of confessing this, professing this in public. And they immediately get taken out to the streets and killed. But they don't care. And so, uh, are we that alive? And as we go forward, uh, we mark this. This to me is the beginning of the year. This is the biggest day of the year. The resurrection of Jesus. The biggest holiday. Uh, the biggest holy, no, holiday means holy day. And the resurrection of Jesus is the most important day, period. And so as you go forward, I want you all to mark this day. I want you to think about this coming year and living alive in the kingdom of God, seeking to live in the kingdom of God. That transition I talk about every week, and it's not by accident, it's what the Holy Spirit puts on my heart, to not just believe in God, but to be alive in Christ, to share the gospel, to invite people to God, to invite people to church. Uh, the challenge for all of us this year is to get one more person to come to church so this church doubles in size. Say amen. And so everywhere you go, and that means that you just go to the same places with the same people you've seen for the past 50 years. No, that means on purpose, you go somewhere you don't usually go. And you get to know people you don't already know. And that you invite those people that aren't haven't gone to church in 40 or 50 years to come to this church and that you're excited about it and that you know that this is a good thing and that you share that love and that mercy and that goodness and be bold. Was Christ bold? I am not ashamed of the gospel. The words of Paul, just beautiful words. Do not be ashamed. Be bold because God is with us. Amen. Amen. And Christ is alive. And may you be alive in Christ the way Christ is alive in you. Amen. Amen. Now, I remember this week to do communion. <laughs> I like that. So, uh, Tanya, do we have trash cans? All right, so the answer is no. So, uh, I'll just share with you. All I have is honesty. I don't have anything else. So, uh, we're trying to smooth out the communion thing because I know it's not real smooth at this point. Uh, but we're gonna, so what we're going to do is we're going to have Scott be the usher. He's going to release uh, the aisles to come up so there's not such a line. Uh, we're going to have me holding the bread in the middle. And then we'll have the grape juice on either side. And then you come forward and take it and partake while you're here. And then go back to your seat and pray. And you go back up the sides. And there's enough room except for our wheelchair folks. But everybody else will fit. I fit. I'm pretty big. And so... Uh, I think that's the things I need to remember. We're supposed to have trash cans up here, but we use them for the towels. So, <laughs> on the Thursday night for the foot washing. And so, but uh, we'll see how that goes. But now, uh, that's the instructions. So now we'll have a scripture reading that goes with it. The beautiful words of Luke. So Luke writes, and when the hour came, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat the Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Amen. And he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, the cup, after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. So the message through the Holy Spirit to all of us today is that as we partake of the body and blood of Christ, as we partake of Holy Communion with each other, because communion means a community, the brothers and sisters in Christ, that we become one with Christ, that we are accepting that we don't just believe in Christ, but we are going into a covenant 
with Christ. And it is special. It is a marriage. We are the bride of Christ. That there are vows, that there are expectations, that there is a responsibility in this relationship. But the blessings are abundant. The blessings are eternal. The blessings of this marriage, of this relationship, of this covenant are for eternity. And so as we come forward, as we partake of the wine, as we partake of the, the bread, being the body and the blood of Christ. I just pray that the Holy Spirit uh, be in you. That this be a most special, a most holy day. And that uh, you truly, truly be one with Christ. So dear Heavenly Father, we raise uh, this blood of Christ and this body of Christ up to you. We give you the praise, we give you the thanks, we can never pay you back for the gift of your son upon the cross, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the painful death, the beating, the suffering, the crucifixion for our goodness, for our glory, for our benefit, that we may spend eternity with you as we celebrate the resurrection of Christ, that the tomb is indeed empty, that Christ has risen he has risen indeed. May you bless these beautiful, wonderful Christian people. May you touch their hearts. May you continue to transform them. May you continue to open their hearts and their eyes and their minds and their souls that they grow closer to you with each breath and especially through this most blessed act. Do this in remembrance of me that this is the new covenant given in my blood. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen.
communion. We have a Father, as we take the body and the blood of Christ, we are truly one uh, spiritually and physically with Christ. Uh, as we talked about in Bible study this week, sometimes we do this uh, just more out of practice. May today be very touching, very spiritual. May you speak to our hearts of the importance of this, that for thousands of years, every Easter, every uh, church that seeks the Lord and takes part in this covenant renewal, today may you touch our hearts individually and as a church. May we renew this relationship, this covenant, that we seek to be one with you, one with each other. Let the Portage Prairie Methodist Church truly be the most loving place, the most godly place in all of southwestern Michigan, if not the world. Help to break us, help to mold us, reveal us, and remove the scales from our eyes so that we may grow closer to you. Bless this building, bless these people as we live to serve you. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Bless this most sacred of days, this most holy of days. May it be all for your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, who gave his life so that we may have eternal life. All God's beautiful and blessed children say, Amen. Amen.
Uh, so it's been a glorious day, a wonderful breakfast. Uh, if you didn't make the breakfast good, that means more for me, right? So, uh, just so you know, next year I plan on doing all the same things and uh, plan ahead, plan on being here. It was a wonderful week. Amen, amen. And, uh, what more do you want to do with your life than to worship God? And, uh, I just pray that it is your heart. And we are blessed to be here. I'm just so excited. I don't even know what to say, right, Johnny? And so glad, uh, just glad you all are here. And as I look out now, once again, almost everybody's smiling. There's a few of you, but uh, you smiling, Brian? <laughs> all right, there's my buddy. So, amen. And just, uh, I do not I say, I just don't want it to end, you know? And so we're going to uh, say our benediction. We're going to sing our prayer song. We'll stick around, have a cup of coffee, give everybody a hug, tell them you love them. Uh, God is with us. Amen. Amen. So dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this Resurrection Sunday. We thank you for Jesus because it's all about Jesus from beginning to end. The Alpha and the Omega was Jesus from the beginning. It's Jesus in the end. Uh, we just pray your spirit upon these beautiful people that are gathered here. You continue to touch these hearts. You continue to change us. You continue to grow this church. But always do, all that we say, all that we plan, everything, every day is all about you. Uh, chase Satan out of this place. Anywhere, anybody's heart, anything, the, any, even the, the smallest little thing, purify us, cleanse us. May that communion truly do what it's intended to do. As we go forward this week, until we meet again next Sunday, you know, uh, guide us, speak to us. These people want to serve you. Uh, guide us. Amen, amen, amen. And so as we do this, put that joy in our heart. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Uh, make us powerful. Make us your servants. Make us what you will have us be in all things. God's kingdom come, all things for the glory of God. And all God's beautiful and blessed children say, Amen. Amen. Amen.